Hi, everyone. I'm a little, I'm a little bit nervous, so, yeah. I need your support. Uh, please pardon me to quickly pull up my... Um, yeah, uh, thank you guys for coming again. Uh, my name is Damilari from Teka Bar. Uh, we are going to be talking for this panel about why mobile money is at the heart of, uh, is at the heart of African's economic growth. Uh, joining me will be my... Okay, I think I'll just have to read the, their name. Nika Nagavi. Uh, Nika Nagavi is the ex executive director of MNO's MFS Africa. Uh, I need to let you guys know that you're only going to be seeing me on the stage. I'm the only one on the stage, so get used to it. Every other person is joining virtually. Uh, Esige Aguele is the co-founder and CEO of Corel D. Uh, Corel D is a company, in, uh, is a very fine me company. Uh, hi, Esige, how are you doing? How are you? I'm happy to be here. Very well, thank you. Uh, the top person is Fauzia Ali Kimanthi, Acting Chief Consumer Business Officer uh, at Safaricom. How you doing, uh, Fauzi? Hi, everyone. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, how you doing, Nika? Great, thank you. I hope All right. you can hear me. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, for this panel, we'll just, we just want to understand the role mobile money is playing in the entire African commerce space. Uh, mobile money is big. Um, we see what's happening in the Eastern Africa with Safaricom, Empresa. We see what's happening in the Francophone with, uh, um, with Wave, with Orange Money, with Free, and some other players. And we are definitely, very soon we're gonna be seeing that traction happening in Nigeria as well with uh, MTN, Momo, and Airtel. Uh, so just to let you understand that there's a trend here and mobile money has a very big role to play in the uh, pan-African or cross-continental uh, uh, e-commerce or commerce uh, space. So uh, I'm going to be starting with um, Nika. Nika, how are you doing once again? Great. How's the weather Thank over you. there? It's a bit cloudy, as you can see. It's cloudy. A bit chill, yes, yeah. Nothing very, like Lagos. All right. It's, it's cloudy over here, too. Uh, so, uh, Nika, I would just like to understand, uh, this year, this year 2022, what do you think is the biggest, the biggest development in the mo mobile money space? Great question. So, first, I don't think we will see much change in mobile money operations or how mobile money is delivered today. But there are two key trends. I don't know whether you can hear me on online. I can hear yes, you. Yes, uh, we can hear you. Can, sorry, can we? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So just make it a little bit audible, louder. So OK. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start using my singing voice. So um, yeah, so first, I don't think we'll see much change in how um, mobile money operates today or how mobile money is delivered today. But there are two key trends that I think are worth keeping an eye on. Um, one you've already mentioned is the adoption of mobile money in Nigeria, which is going to be mainly driven by MTN and Airtel. And without a doubt, this will change the landscape and introduce some innovative services, perhaps through partnerships that are going to be very different um, from what we've seen so far uh, across other markets. The only other parallel that we have is India. Uh, payment ser service uh, banks or PSPs in Nigeria were modeled heavily on payment banks in India, and they're expected to operate as part of part physical, part digital banks, and have at least 25% presence uh, in rural areas. Um, but they're restricted from lending, either directly or through partnerships underwriting insurance or dealing with um, uh, FX or foreign exchange, because of these restrictions on product offering, it is highly possible that they will face the same challenges that uh, payments banks uh, faced in India. 
Um, and that wasn't a success story per se of the 11 basically payment bank licenses that were granted in principle in 2015. Only um, six of them uh, basically managed to launch and out of that, those six, only three of them to there are um, basically um, 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 they're profitable. Um, so we have to look at that, uh, but we have to remind ourselves that Nigeria is the continent's largest adult and unbanked population. Nigeria's payments landscape, as you know uh, better than anyone else, has seen big ticket investments and a host of new entrants uh, in recent years. But we've, we haven't seen one type of uh, basically player taking the lead in acquiring or serving Nigeria's vast unbanked population in a sustainable manner. And here, when we talk about MTN and Airtel, we, I think MNOs have a key advantage since 60% of the financially excluded in Nigeria use a mobile phone. And both Airtel and MTN have a wide network in the country. They have the brand name, the customer kind of trust, and also the experience and know-how of running successful mobile money services in other markets across the all right. continent. All right, um, all right, Nika. Uh, I think we'd like to, let me, I'm gonna cycle back. Uh, let me just quickly go to Fazia. Uh, so Fazia, uh, how are you doing again? I'm um, doing good. Yeah, so I mean, um, how's, it, how's, how's the weather over there? Cloudy as well? Kenya to, today, it's uh, very bright and sunny. It's a beautiful day. All right, all right. Um, so yeah. Uh, how, how can operators in the mobile money create more value for African consumers? Um, how do you think we can do that? Okay, so I think there are, there are four ways in which we can do I think there are more, but let me just mention four. And, I, and one of the things I can say is that I think um, mob, the mobile industry in sub-Saharan Africa has actually risen to the challenge of ensuring that individuals and businesses remain connected I'm hearing another sound, but let me just continue. <laughs> Remain connected. But despite all this, over 800 million um, Africans are still not connected to the internet. So uh, the four areas that I think MNOs can be able to support, I think the first one is, which I think is what led to the success of M-Pesa in Kenya, is we need to be able to, to, to innovate for both customers who have smartphones and the customers who don't have a smartphone. I think when we launched uh, M-Pesa in Safaricom, I mean, one of the things we kept saying is that you get into a small shop that looks like a shack, leave 10,000 shillings and leave with an SMS and be confident that when you push that, when you go to the tool and actually send that SMS to someone else through the toolkit, the person actually believes that he values money. It, it was based on a lot of trust, but it enabled people who didn't have smartphones be able to access uh, mobile money services. So I think that's the first thing, innovating widely. But I think secondly, as more and more consumers get uh, access to smartphones and also government services and corporates start to provide their services online. For example, if you want a passport now, you have to apply for it online. You have to pay for it online. If you don't have a passport, then we are increasing the level of digital divide. So this is the second part where MNOs can be able to support by digitizing the base that is still having smartphone. It's still a big population, even here in Kenya. And how we are doing that is by partnering with uh, OEMs, partnering with Google, partnering with Facebook to be able to, and also pay go partners who are able to ensure that customers can be able to pay for a phone very slowly. We have a fantastic platform here called Lipa Mdogo Mdogo. It basically pays slowly, where a customer just pays 20 shillings a day to be able to access a device within a year's period. So that's another area where we could do that. The third area I think is because we have access to so much data, we can be able to, pro to use that data for credit scoring so that we can be able to innovate and extend the, the products that we can be able to provide. You know, from basic credit products, savings, insurance, basically moving the envelope to financial health to enable and completely empower our customers just through the device. And finally, and, and most important, it's also how we can be able to transform enterprise, small, medium, and large, to completely digitize their value chains from basic collection of money to, co to the whole value chain uh, collecting money. We can give various examples in Kenya. Right. 
from uh, our breweries, et cetera, et cetera. So let me stop there. But yeah. I think those are the yeah, four. Yeah, so I, I, I actually have a follow-up a follow uh, question for you. Uh, okay. So Nika mentioned uh, the, the recent developments, I mean, the biggest development in Africa, mobile money sector, to be what we're currently having in Nigeria, where you have the Momo, Airtel Momo, I mean, MTN Momo and Airtel coming into the market. It's like, that's like one of the biggest uh, development this year. Uh, do you also feel that that's, that's what we have as the biggest, do you feel that's like the biggest development? Or you have your own uh, different, or there's a different development you think we should be looking into? I, I, I think the, the way I'd look at it is this way. The, the macros are right towards ensuring that those two telcos will succeed. Very young population, uh, very many unbanked, um, very many desiring the basic send money services, access to credit, et cetera, et cetera. And they have a lot of data. And the highest percentage of the unbanked is in our continent and in the in, in Nigeria, in, in all our African countries, to be honest. But now people are walking around with a mobile phone as their source of, I think there will be an explosion. Um, with what we have seen in Kenya, it, apart from just Safaricom, the whole ecosystem, it builds a whole industry. I think everything will be transformed. Most people in Kenya don't walk out of their house with their wallets. They walk out with a phone, that's it. You pay for everything from parking to food, to insurance, to moving your money to the bank, everything from the little person who is selling wares in a market to the bank CEO. So I think it's a fantastic and an exciting time for Nigerians. I, I, can, I can only wish to be there when the launch happens. All right. All right, uh, Fauzia, thank you for that. We are also happy, Nigerians are happy for the opportunity uh, mobile money is bringing to the table, um, even though we have to scale so many audios to get there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Esige, how are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm on mute. I'm, I'm good, how are you? How are you doing? All right, I'm fine. Uh, so, I mean, as someone who has been building in the verification, uh, you know, KYC, uh, sector for a while. You've seen a lot of like all these, a lot of difficulties, people trying to identify their customers uh, and also anything, just avoid fraud, make sure that the, the process is seamless for everybody, for the uh, entire value chain. Uh, so I'd like to know uh, what are the business opportunity presented by mobile money in Africa for big and small businesses. And to be honest, I feel like this question is a little bit cliche, but I trust you to always come with some, <laughs> some fresh angle to it. Uh, thank you, no pressure. So, you know, and it's been fantastic listening to the first two um, uh, uh, participants in this, in this um, um, uh, panel um, and very interesting. And, you know, I completely agree. One of the things I would say about mobile money is that it offers the dual promise, and this is why we're very excited about it, by the way, of financial inclusion in any economy, uh, but also opening up the market for um, both small, I would say medium-sized and large businesses as well. Now, the, the reason that happens is, of course, we know with mobile money, the value, that's the virtual value, uh, is tied to a SIM. So it gives that mobility um, and access to the masses. So everyone has said, for example, that, you know, we have one of the youngest populations. And, um, of course, everybody in Nigeria, almost everybody has a mobile phone, even before they have a bank account. So that expansion, and we're talking about an explosion, you know, I feel like Verify Me um, and Core ID, our B2B platform, almost have the same um, trajectory also with mobile money in terms of it's so reliant on financial inclusion, which we see in an explosion of in Nigeria. Um, so, so really, in terms of business opportunities, the business opportunities are there for us because we are um, actually uh, one of the major infrastructures that are supporting the KYC for the telcos for mobile money. So happy to, you know, to say that. Um, and also, um, from the perspective of not just the uh, financial inclusion in terms of mobility, um, and I know that somebody has mentioned, of course, and it's true, um, they can't directly give services or get in insurance, but the opportunity to build wallets um, that help masses with cash flow, um, that can give contactless uh, payment services um, using RFID, um, the sites are the same. Um, you know, it also really expands the technology 
um, opportunities for all types of payments and payment products and, and wallet cash flow management products as well. So that's a huge dimension um, for a lot of businesses. And they too are customers, by the way. So we also see, you know, um, people in the industry, the opportunities are um, so much in terms of the opportunity to build, I would say, go beyond open banking and build financial inclusion products for the masses is also there, um, given where mobile money is going with the masses. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Osige. Uh, so, Nika, uh, I promise to circle back, so I'm here. Uh, I'd like to know, so we're talking about future of, uh, future of uh, mobile money, of course, future of, uh, future of commerce, but at this moment, we want to understand what mobile money really owns in the future. Uh, so what, what you do essentially with mobile money is cash in, cash out, right? Uh, you know, you go to someone who, like an agent to, to withdraw money or to deposit, or you can also use your mobile number to, to do some trans, uh, transaction. Uh, do you think at some point we are going to be able to uh, access credit from our, or is like from our mobile money uh, app, for instance, uh, M-Pesa or uh, MTN Momo. Now we, it's going to get to a point where we can actually access credit. You know, take instant loan uh, from our mobile money. Or do you think uh, mobile money is not coming with our use case anytime soon? So that's a good question because, uh, and I'm sure my colleague from Safaricom will tell you about their their success story, which I'm sure are that they've launched many years back in partnership with the banks. Uh, so we've seen partnerships with banks across the board with different operators being able to offer micro loans uh, using the telco and also uh, the mobile money data. Uh, and that's a model that has been proven uh, across East Africa and other markets as well. Uh, when we're looking at Nigeria and how that partnership will look for offering credit, that depends on the innovation that is going to happen in the market that I'm very excited about to see how players, mobile money players and the ecosystem will respond to this um, explosion of mobile money adoption in the market. But the model is already proven. I think she's best placed uh, to tell you about their story of how they've seen uh, M. Shawari starting from few users to millions of users. And they have other similar products that are for basically overdraft, uh, for Lisa, et cetera, that she can talk about. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Fauzia, I would like to understand uh, from the, I mean, from the uh, point of view of, of uh, Impesa, um, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of arguments or a lot of conversation going on in the mobile money sector about uh, free or low um, transaction fee. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that Impesa is not cheap. <laughs> And we know that Wave has already disrupted the francophone mobile money market. Uh, and you will see that every, every other players in the market are trying to like, uh, blend with it. Uh, what would you feel? I mean, how would you, how would you like, address the, the case of free or low transaction fee in the mobile money market? For instance, Wave uh, uh, sort of like enter the East African market. What do you think is going to be the trend then? I know this is like a little bit edgy for you, but indulge me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's look at it this way. Um, there's always a cost to do business, but I think at the same time, we have to be cognizant of the fact of where is our customer at the moment. So we are saying our customer needs credit, by the way, which we do here. Uh, they need access to credit because they, they probably need to buy foods, uh, food and service, but at the point when they want to do it, they don't have the money. And most of the time what this credit is, it's, it's short-term credit. And of course there is a charge to it. Uh, we deliver it through a partnership with banks has been mentioned. And I think if you look at it from the customer perspective, it's important for us to continue to realize that the external pressures of macros, whether it's inflation, what's happening in world markets, fuel prices, are just putting pressure and pressure on customers that we have to look at the cost of credit. So one of the things we say about new entrants into the market is that it, first it makes it interesting, it makes it interesting because they come up with very innovative products. They come at a lower cost. 
And as a result, we have to look at our cost of delivery. So because the customer is the reason we wake up and do what we do, we have to be able to deliver a lower cost uh, to our customers. And you're right, even as you say, it's tongue in cheek, but um, overall customers find the cost of credit high. And one of the things that we've set for ourselves in Safaricom is to align to one of our SDG goals to ensure that the remittance cost comes to 3% and below. It's a journey, uh, but it's something we have to do through our partners and because of the volumes that we're pushing. I mean, one of the things we were saying is that when we started doing loans, in two, whenever we started, when we launched in person in 2007, only 500,000 loans had been dispersed. But now we are doing 12 million loans. I mean, already with the sheer volume, we should be able to bring the cost down significantly. So it's either the customer will push us to do us to do that, or also competition, which I think is healthy. So I can tell you, in Safaricom, cost of credit is one of the areas we're looking at, uh, in terms of saying how is it that we can bring it down together with our partners. All right. Uh, uh, so it's, we have to do it. All right, all right. Uh, first, I think what I can understand is that, though, okay, I just have to tell you that you don't need to fret. Uh, Wave is not coming anytime soon. You can, <laughs> you can chill. <laughs> so you see how your market, don't worry. It's, I think it's about 98% of the entire mobile money market, right? Let me put it this way. While that number is quite shocking, over 90% of transactions in Kenya are still cash. So there is still a huge opportunity. Okay, uh, I get you, don't so, worry. So we'll, 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 talk, yeah. we'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> All right. Um, Esige, uh, quickly, uh, I, I, I mean, we'll see, we've seen something like, uh, like we've seen a pulse in the mobile money uh, sector in Nigeria. Uh, I mean, there's this thing they used to say, small yards, they shake, right? So Nigeria is also trying to, to, <laughs> to enter this. Do you think it's mobile money is promising in Nigeria because you know our banking sector is sort of like really strong and we have a lot of like strong new new banks, fintech trying to do do their thing. So do you think mobile money is going to scale in this country? I do, fantastically. I, I think, of course, and I think, uh, you know, the speakers from MFS and also Safaricom have said, um, we all believe, and those of us who are in this sector, I mean, they're indirectly, but we're really fintech enabling. Um, we all believe that because um, all of us continue to see huge scale in the area of, you know, um, grow, growth of transactions um, and digitalization. And then if you look at Nigeria, um, our ecosystem is kind of right for that, right, where we have the youngest um, population potentially in Africa, and it's a very high population as well. And then we're seeing the trends, right? Everybody, you know, and the, the ability for us to go to mobile mobile phones. So I, I do think we don't have enough smartphones yet. So there will need to be an SMS solution. Um, that could be uh, a challenge, particularly as it relates to um, being completely compliant with KYC so that it can do higher value transactions, which means probably more revenue for the entire value chain. Um, but even with those challenges, there's still so much opportunity because then the opportunity to grow um, and, and sell mobile phones using mobile money data, by the way, as microcredit. Now, in terms of comp competing against each other, I, I really don't think so. Um, I do think that they're all strong in different ways. You have your traditional banks, you have your digital banks, you have your payment service banks. And I think that if you look at traditional banks, for example, there's still the opportunity. I think we have a 16 to 20 million home shortfall in Nigeria in terms of credit um, and huge credit and high value credit that I don't think mobile money is going to cover. Um, so there's so many opportunities in the banking space. And also, uh, I, I, as we look at regulation, um, the potential for partnerships, so for banks to potentially or insurance companies to underwrite um, the products that uh, payment service banks are offering to the masses are also there. Um, so there's also huge upside for them as well, you know, through those partnerships. So uh, no, I don't think that they're competing against each other. It's almost different sectors, but also the collaboration is going to mean a lot for the, um, for the economy and for them as well. All right. Uh, thank you, Sige. Um... I know you're trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> I love that angle. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, come to the end of this panel. Uh, it's unfortunate we cannot extend more than uh, this, more than our time. Uh, I still have like a couple of very interesting questions to ask, but I think we'll have to do that offline. Uh, so you can reach out to all the panelists uh, after the event. Reach out to them on LinkedIn. Reach out to them on social media. Uh, so thank you, Nika. Thank you, Isige. Thank you, Fauzer. 
thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank Kuro you. Monet. Thanks, Marza. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. It was nice meeting you, too. <laughs> thank you. Same here. Bye-bye.